New tonight, lawmakers are now demanding a Senate investigation after our report, which exposed flaws at the Department of Toxic Substances Control. That's the state agency charged with protecting our health and environment from toxic waste. Investigative reporter Vicki Wynn first revealed the serious allegations last night. She joins us now with more on this breaking story. Vicki. Jess and Raj, this letter went to DTSC Director Debbie Raphael this morning from the chair of the Senate Appropriations Committee. In it, State Senator Kevin DeLeon says he's asked for a Senate investigation by the Office of Oversight and Outcomes into the allegations we exposed. He says, quote, it's disturbing to see current employees feel compelled to mask their identity out of fear of retaliation for discussing DTSC enforcement practices. We've also just learned Newark Senator Ellen Corbett is also asking the agency for an explanation. She says she's outraged by what she saw in our report. As we told you last night, the DTSC has a thousand employees and a $200 million budget. But insiders tell us the department is failing to protect us from companies that pollute. California has some of the strictest anti-pollution laws in the nation. But sources in the Department of Toxic Substances Control say those laws are being ignored. The expectation the public has to be protected is not being served. They ask to be disguised, but say they're breaking their silence because breakdowns at the DTSC are costing communities their health. People are getting sick, people are dying, and community members are crying out. We're not doing near enough. In fact, we're allowing it to happen. They point to Evergreen Oil in Newark. The company recycles used motor oil, and government records show it has a history of polluting. Oil spills, explosions, major fires, including this one in 2011. We found hundreds of complaints stretching back to 1987. Residents reporting difficulty breathing and nausea. Sinuses would burn, and... Uh... Uh, it just, you just didn't feel like you could work out th outside. They've denied it, denied it, denied it. I do not think they're being regulated very well at all. Evergreen has been cited by multiple local agencies for everything from leaked fumes to high levels of arsenic in wastewater. Sources say the DTSC could revoke Evergreen's permits, but instead gave it a series of small fines. The DTSC says its oversight is limited. We have the ability to look at both air and water, and we're not doing a good enough job. And we're trying to pawn off our responsibility. In 2000, when Evergreen was accused of illegally burning PCBs, a chemical linked to cancer, the company settled with the DTSC for $825,000. But instead of cash, DTSC allowed Evergreen to pay nearly half its fine in other ways, including equipment donation to the fire department. These fines amount to a pinprick on the hide of an elephant. Consumer advocate Lisa Tucker authored this scathing report on the DTSC. People inside know that there is extensive pollution in some of these instances that can harm people, and they do nothing about it. And that is outrageous. Can you stop and chat with us for a minute, please? I actually can't stop, but you can chat with me as I walk. Debbie Raphael is the DTSC director. We caught up with her after the agency reneged on its offer to provide an interview with staff. What do you say to those folks who are frustrated and feel like they're... Health is at risk. Yeah. I would say that quite a lot happens and that we are always open and I, my door is always open. If people feel that people who work for me are not being responsive, I want to know about it. But those who live near Fibrotech in Southern California say she does know their concerns. Many here say the hazardous waste recycler is poisoning their groundwater with hexavalent chromium, the same chemical at the heart of the film, Aaron Brockovich. Yes, the water's poisonous. Well, uh, my family had five members, and four of us had cancer. In a letter, Fibrotech says it didn't cause the contamination, but is cleaning it up. Shirley White wants to know why the company is using a permit that expired 16 years ago. Fibrotech says it's working with DTSC to renew that permit. How would you assess the permitting and enforcement that's happening right now? What kind of letter grade would you give it? That's a great question. I don't have a letter grade, and that's, in fact, why I need to do this assessment. The day after our interview, Director Raphael sent out this internal memo telling staff 22 of the state's 118 licensed facilities are working with outdated permits. She writes the agency must review the permitting program. When it comes to the transportation of hazardous waste, sources say record keeping is so bad, regulators don't really know which toxic substances are going where. 
We analyzed the last 13 years of DTSC reports and found 44% of the entries listed blank or unknown when it came to what type of toxic waste was being transported. Who's looking to see if you've got a shipment of methyl ethyl death going to Disneyland on Bin Laden trucking? Part of the problem could be DTSC staff itself. A state audit found 59% are not in the correct jobs. That's six times what the state says is acceptable. People were given positions who weren't qualified. Sources say the department needs real reform and soon. It requires accountability, transparency, and results. Yes, and I've got to go. So you will sit down with us yeah. at a later date for yes. a proper interview? You bet. Okay, you thank bet. you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. And we will follow up with the director once her review of DTSC is complete. Evergreen Oil had no comment, and Justin Raj, a lot of fast-moving developments on this. So look forward to more of our reporting on DTSC.